Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session. I am Niharika Sondi, and I'm the founder director of Ednet Consultants, which is one of Delhi's leading overseas education consultancies. Uh, we have assemb assembled here today for a webinar where students can go through their study in Canada options. Every year, we have been conducting an annual fair with the Canadian universities, but this year, given our current circumstances, we have organized this virtual fair. Now, as we all know, Canada has fast established itself as one of the top, if not the top most destination for studying abroad. As a counselor with over 20 years of experience, I have witnessed the growing need for the opportunities in Canada while learning about the unique features of these schools that continue to entice international students. Enriched with a rigorous academic structures, intensive courses, brilliant management, sciences, and liberal art programs, as well as dynamic research culture, these universities attract thousands of applicants each year. Moreover, their scholarships, PR opportunities, as well as work permits, placements, and co-op programs help students grow holistically with a career-oriented approach. I would like to congratulate the students and the parents who have graced us with their presence today, as they will now have the exclusive opportunity to learn more about these stellar universities I'm just going to be introducing. Each university representatives will have their own segment wherein they will introduce their university's campus, their courses, their curriculums, extracurricular activities, the student organizations, placement opportunities, scholarship options, and so on. After the conclusion of these informative segments, we will have a Q&A session where we can gain further insights on areas students and parents are especially keen on learning about. Feel free to leave your queries in the chat box and we will address them accordingly. Joining us today are representatives uh, from the highest universities of Canada, including Ms. Karuna Osman from the University of Waterloo, Ms. Sita Dronan Raju from Trent University, Devakar Sharma from Wilfrid Laurier University, Mr. Ajit Singh from McKeven University, and the College of New Caledonia from the University of New Brunswick. We have Kashish Goel, Samanyu Sharma will be representing Acadia University, followed by Imran. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Imran is not going to be joining us, but he was from Thompson Rivers University. I'm sure someone else will be able to talk about uh, the universities uh, which he was representing. Uh, that is Thompson Rivers University, North Island College, and the Center for Entertainment Arts at Langara College. Now representing uh, St. FX University is Achim uh, Gano. Uh, Gunamachi, Guna, Gunami, sorry, <laughs> followed by uh, Ms. Nalini uh, Kidambi for the University of Manitoba, Sahil Chavla for the University of Saskatchewan, and last and not the least, we have Kajal Ganesh for Columbia University and Memorial University Grand Hill Campus. I think I've covered up all. Am I right, uh, Ms. Karuna Osman? So without any further ado, I invite Ms. Karuna Osman from the University of Waterloo to take over the session and introduce to the students the academic advantages they have to offer. So I would like to welcome Ms. Karuna. So nice to have you here with us, Karuna. Uh, I'm at the University of Waterloo, and uh, of course, as I was saying, it's an exciting time. It's uh, time for uh, accepting the offers, etc., for those who have registered. Those who have not registered, I want to speak about uh, not just the ranking of the university, it is the experiential learning that you're going to get from University of Waterloo, in which you will study and work together. 
uh, our aim is to make you career ready. Uh, after your degree, we want to have 96 to 100% employability factor. So we're very strong in making sure that you have found your passion within the program. When you go out to work, you are going to experience your job. You're going to uh, figure out which part of the job you uh, like and then take courses and tailor make your interest. You are also going to be given an opportunity to include uh, entrepreneurship courses. We have double degree programs. We have very strong academia in terms of uh, the quality of research that the university does in the top U15 universities for research. Uh, Sahil and uh, Nalini will talk about two other U15 universities as well. I'm not going to speak very much. I just want you to know that we're located uh, outside of Toronto, one hour and 15 minutes in the city of Waterloo with two other institutions, Wilford Laurier University and uh, Conestoga College. It's a university town, so you will meet lots of young people. And if you want to go and be with a very large community, just take a bus and go to Toronto. Uh, we have six faculties and two of them are closed for this year. We will not be taking any more applications for engineering and for mathematics but all other uh, faculties are open for three more days. So arts with double or triple, uh, double major and, and uh, one minor with health sciences, kids who are interested in pursuing programs into medicine, dentistry, physiotherapy, uh, pharma uh, pharmacy, they can join into those programs. Pure sciences, of course, we won Nobel Prize, uh, Donna Strickland won Nobel Prize last year. So very well demanded, lots of students applying for programs. And of course, environment, the key thing in people's mind. Uh, so please uh, ask questions, R write them down in there, but I require very high grades. I apologize for that, uh, but we will discuss that admission requirements are extremely at the highest level. A 95 to 96% student in some programs only has 40% chance of getting in. Uh, I would like to take this moment to thank you, Ajanet and Niharika, for having us here, our very, very trusted partner who brings us only quality students. So thank you so much for doing that, Niharika. We are never worried about the quality of students coming from your office. They're always very well prepared, and uh, you run a very good organization, and please continue to do so because students need good one-on-one -on -one counseling, which they're not getting from many other organizations. So we'd like to thank you. I'm doing this on behalf of Sita and the whole Illum team uh, because we truly do appreciate it. I mean, if you could talk about that, if all other people were like you, our job would become a bit easier. So mm -hmm. thank you for this. And there will be some questions about COVID and uh, one of us will answer that for you at the end. I will present one uh, uh, small piece of information what's happening with COVID. Uh, India is a bigger danger in terms of will your borders open, et cetera. So we know that September is going to be online for most classes and some face-to-face -face classes as well. But uh, uh, I'm going to move it on to Nalini, please. Uh, Nalini is sitting right next to me. So go ahead, Nalini, if you can take over. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Harika. Good evening, ma'am. Ashish Sita, whoever I can see on the screen, and good evening all the students. So um, um, I'm going to be talking about Wilfrid Laurier University. Uh, Mr. Divakar Sharma is not here, and I'm going to be talking on behalf of him. Uh, Wilfrid Laurier University is a 100, 110 years old public university located in Ontario. We have two campuses, one at Waterloo and the other one at Brantford. Uh, we are proud to call ourselves the parent university of University of Waterloo. And we are also proud about the fact that for the last four consecutive years, uh, we've been ranked number one when it comes to uh, student satisfaction uh, in uh, Canada by McLean's. Uh, we are known for our uh, business programs, business and economics, business technology management, and uh, other unique programs such as uh, uh, digital media and journalism, uh, uh, game design and development. Um, we have a very good geography program 
and we also have a program called business technology management which is a combination of computer science and business and uh, we have uh, programs in uh, faculty of science faculty of music faculty of education and we have uh, uh, under faculty of science we have programs like computer science data science environmental science so on and so forth we also expect um uh, you know high grades uh, nothing less than 85 and for our business programs we need uh, over 90% so uh, the good news is that for those of you who haven't applied still we are still open and uh, students will be able to submit their application until uh, june 12th uh, we will be closing on june 12th and our ielts requirement is 6.5 no band less than 6 and um, when it comes to tuition um, we are in the range of uh, um 27000 to 33000 canadian dollars per annum so most of our programs have uh, co-op and our business programs have uh, 16 months of co-op which is the largest in Uh, Canada. So, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll also leave my uh, email ID uh, in the chat box for everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with me. Thank you so much. Let's have Columbia College present, please. Thank you yeah. so much. Hi, everybody. Good evening. So, this is Kajal this side. I'm talking about Columbia College. We are a college in the province of British Columbia, in the city of Vancouver. We were established in the year 1936. 95% of our student population are mostly international students. We have very small class sizes. We have a very affordable tuition fees. Our tuition normally ranges from 16,000 Canadian dollars per year. The major programs that we offer are basically university transfer, associate arts, and associate of science programs. the students looking for universities like university of british columbia simon fraser it's not easy getting admissible in a, with low grades but you can always come to memorial and get transferred to the third and fourth year if you maintain the grades so uh, this is a very good option to get into the uh, main universities in canada uh, we are still open for our fall 2020 intake the basic requirement is we need an aggregate of 75% and above for your last completed studies the ielts score requirement is an overall of 6.5 with no band less than 6 but currently with the scenario we accept duolingo scores the scores we require would be an 150 so uh, we have an application fee too which is 200 canadian dollars we are open for three intakes so uh, if you have not applied please do apply uh, so um, most probably we would accept the applications at least till uh, june mid so uh, if you have any more queries i'm uh, putting my details in the chat box please feel free to contact me anytime thank you so much uh, i think there was a little bit of an error by mistake you said memorial she's talking about columbia college in british columbia vancouver yes. yeah yes ma'am so I no, no worries uh, <laughs> i think by mistake the memorial come, came into the world but that's okay it happens so what we are saying is uh, it is a pure school it is a school that takes you in uh, if even if you have 95% i'm going to give you one advantage of it you can do first two years of ubc program at columbia college at college rates so you will save yourself thousands of dollars because is the only province of canada which has 100% credit transfer from Columbia College to any of the universities in British Columbia, uh, Alberta, and McGill. So please uh, look at this college as a a puritan, uh, meeting your needs. If you have less finances, you can also do a two-year associate degree, then get a three-year work permit. And once you get a work permit, you can convert your status into a permanent resident of Canada, and continue on with your studies and pay local domestic fees. continuing on we are going to go to mr kashish goel hi good evening everyone my name is kashish thank you for being here today i am the international student recruiter for university of new brunswick unb is one of the oldest public universities of canada this was the first english speaking university of canada and the first engineering school uh, of the country as well uh, 
We were established in the year 1785. We have a history, a legacy of over 235 years. Uh, we are located on the East Coast, right next to the uh, Atlantic Ocean in the beautiful province of New Brunswick, very close to the US as well. Uh, not that everyone wants to go very close to the US right now, but perhaps in the future <laughs> you want to visit there again. Uh, we are very, very close to Boston. It's a four and a half hour drive or about a one hour flight time. Uh, New York would be somewhere around one, uh, one and a half hours. Uh, we have more than 75 undergraduate programs distributed in more than 14 faculties, ranging from uh, bachelors of arts, faculty of uh, engineering, computer science, faculty of management. Uh, we even have a bachelors of health program if you are looking into uh, getting into the healthcare system in the future or getting into medical sciences. Our tuition fee varies from 16500 to 18000 Canadian dollars per year. Uh, we have two campuses, one in the city, Fredericton, which is also the capital city of the province, uh, New Brunswick, and our secondary campus is in the city of St. John, which is a port city. Uh, both our campuses offer on-campus accommodation for all our students as well, which is not too expensive either. Uh, the cost of living in New Brunswick per year would be eight to ten thousand Canadian dollars on the campus itself, which will include your tuition fee, uh, which, sorry, which will include your accommodation, your utilities, your meal plans as well, and tuition fee, like I said, is sixteen thousand five hundred to eighteen thousand dollars, depending on the program you choose for. Uh, I will drop in my email ID uh, for any specific questions. Uh, rest assured, we are here to help you out, and for those students who have already applied and received an offer congratulations and for anyone who is still uh, looking to apply the intakes are for most of us are still open till for september uh, for most of our programs and uh, yeah i'll drop in my email id and we can chat then thank you uh, as we uh, continue on here we are going to have miss sita my colleague who is the regional manager for india for the team uh, Ms. Sita is going to uh, speak about Trent University. Please, Ms. Sita. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sita. Uh, uh, my last name is a little bit complicated, so I will not uh, trouble you with that. I represent Trent University. Trent University is a 56-year-old public university located in the province of Ontario. Uh, we have two campuses, one in a town called Peterborough, which is a 90-minute drive to downtown Toronto, and the other campus is in Oshawa, which is a part of the GTA. So you're just a 40 minute train ride away from Union Station. So both our campuses are pretty close to Toronto, which is uh, wonderful because if you are a person who loves the outdoors, you'd love to choose Peterborough, which is a campus which is 1400 acres, out of which only 300 acres are used up and the rest of it is all nature. So if you're a person who likes high trails and to be a part of a beautiful, green, pristine campus, it is one of the most Instagrammable campuses of Canada and you can choose to be in Peterborough. But if you like to be near the city lights and have, uh, you know, be, the, uh, be near where the buzz and all the, hap the most happening town of uh, Canada is, then you can choose Oshawa. But the good thing is that between both our campuses, we only have about 10,000 students, which gives you an idea of our class sizes. We specialize in small class sizes, which is about 18 to 1. And that gives you a platform and an opportunity to do very, very well because you get in, uh, the opportunity to interact with your professors, to get involved in research at an undergrad level. And so the success rate or the students who are very, very successful when they come to Trent is very, very high. And that's the reason for the last nine years we have been ranked the best undergrad university of the province of Ontario. We also have a faculty of arts, faculty of science and some of our most popular programs are BBA, biology, uh, we have forensic sciences, uh, business and all those programs and the two very unique things which will be very interesting to the 12th grade students who might be among the participants is that we offer BBA without math to CBSE students because we give a lot of weightage to the accounting and commerce programs that you study. So don't worry if you don't have math, you're welcome to apply to Trend. And the other thing is we also allow students who have done the non-medical course where they have biology, physics and chemistry with no mathematics. They can also apply to Trent University for biology and then specialize in health studies if you're planning to make a future in the health related sector. Our fee structure is about 22,000 Canadian dollars. We do look for st uh, students who have a 75% or higher average. If you're 
if your marks are more than 90%, you're eligible for a scholarship. Uh, and um, of course, the large chunks of scholarships were finished by the month of February, but we're still open receiving applications as well as awarding scholarships to the really bright students. So please go ahead and apply. We are open till the 31st of May. I'll also leave my contact details in the chat box and Niharka knows uh, us very well. She has sent a lot of students to Trent. So if you have any questions, you can also directly call, contact Niharka or Ednet and they'll be very happy to guide you with the application process. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Sita. Now going into University of Saskatchewan, uh, Mr. Sahil. Um, a very good evening to everybody. Uh, this is Sahil Chavla from University of Saskatchewan. Uh, University of Saskatchewan is a member of the U15 group and the U15 group includes all top universities in Canada. It includes University of Waterloo, University of British Columbia, U of T, Dalhousie and other top universities as well. Uh, the U15 universities conduct extensive research and University of Saskatchewan is also known for its, for its excellence in research, not only in medical endeavors, but also in scientific endeavors. Uh, we also tackle global challenges like food and water security. And uh, we also have a center for vaccination and, and infectious disease organization at the university where currently research is ongoing for a COVID-19 vaccine as well. So, um, but to come to the main point, we have a wide array of programs ranging from Bachelor of Arts and Science to Engineering, which is our flagship program. And we were the university to give a first undergraduate degree in accounting over 100 years ago. So with regard to the Bachelor of Science, I'd like to mention two particular categories, which is the Department of Biomedical Sciences, under which you study physiology and pharmacology. And you also study courses like microbiology and immunology. Uh, these two courses are excellent uh, to prepare you for a career in medicine. As you're aware, medicine and dentistry, these courses require previous post-secondary study. But at Saskatchewan, you have a great opportunity because right from the first year, 50% of our undergraduate students experience some sort of post-based research or the other. And we have a separate 500-acre campus for research and development. For Bachelor of Arts, we also have fantastic courses as the Department of Economics and also um, Psychology as well. We have certain courses that are not generally available in other universities uh, like environmental earth sciences. Now this is a program that comes with a co-op option. Obviously the duration of the program increases if you do a co-op. Similarly, we have programs in agriculture and bioresources where you can do horticultural science, crop science, animal science. And we also have courses in renewable resource policy management as I previously mentioned that we do tackle global challenges of food and water security. Apart from that, engineering is a flagship program and we are very, very old school when it comes to engineering. We have core branches like chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical, under which you can study megatronics as well. And that really helps from a research point of view. You also have engineering physics where you can study astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, and obviously we have the Edward Business School where you can do a Bachelor of Commerce specializing in supply chain management as well. Again, these courses are not easily available at other universities. Uh, our fees is less compared to other U15 universities ranging between $18,000 to $24,000, uh, the maximum obviously being for engineering and engineering also comes with a co-op and an internship option. Apart from that, for scholarship opportunities, we have uh, great provisions. We've got the best and brightest scholarship and we also give out guaranteed entrance scholarship ranging between $500 to $3,000 and that is obviously if you're between the range of 85 to 100% in your grade 12. Um, Fantastic place to study and live. Saskatoon is a city with a vibrant culture and also offers the amenities of a smaller city. Class sizes are less with the student to faculty ratio 20 is to 1. And there is wide diversity on campus because we have students from over 132 countries studying there and over 3,500 international students. Uh, we are still open for applications. June 1 is the deadline. Uh, I'll drop my email ID in the chat box. You can contact me for any queries that you might have. Thank you very much. Ashim? Thank you. Yes. Uh, good yeah. evening, everyone. My name is Achim, and today I'll be talking about St. Francis Xavier University. We call it as St. FX in short. St. FX University is a public university established in the year 1853, so it is one of the oldest universities in Canada. And we are located in the east coast of Canada in a province called Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is a beautiful province and our university is located in a small town called Antigonish, two hours drive from Halifax. Halifax is the capital of Nova Scotia. 
And we do have four wonderful faculties, that is Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Science, Faculty of Education, and also Business. And we do have one master's program, that is Master's in Computer Science, and two post back diploma program. One is in AI, that is Artificial Intelligence, and the other one is in IT Enterprise Management. And to get into any of the undergrad programs, the entry requirement we ask for is nothing less than 65%. Except for nursing, we ask for 80%. And our score of 6.5 overall, not less than six in all the bands. And to get into master's program, we look for four years of bachelor's, nothing less than 70% in your bachelor's. And for the two post back diploma program, we ask for four years of bachelor's again, nothing less than 70%. And our score remains the same for master's and also for undergrad. And our tuition fee ranges from 18 to 19,000 Canadian dollar per year. Whereas for master's and post bag diploma program, it ranges from 30 to 40,000 Canadian dollar for two years. And the, we have two intakes in a year, that is January and September. The application fee for all the undergrad program, it is just 40 Canadian dollar, whereas for master's and post bag diploma program, it is 100 Canadian dollar. We are still open for September intake. So if any one of this, if any one of you is interested in for Cent FX, we are more than happy to have you in our university. I will drop my contact details in the chat box. If you have any questions, any queries, please write to me anytime. I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much. Uh, can we have presentation for CNC and make you win by Ajit, please? Can you uh, make sure that you uh, create a clear distinction, please, that you're talking about which school. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's safe and sound in these times. Uh, I'm representing two institutes over here today. One is a college, which is a college of New Caledonia, which is in British Columbia. So I will be first talking about CNC College here. So uh, CNC is another college of British Columbia that we are representing over here in this platform. And uh, as Karuna Mam has suggested and, uh, you know, discussed in detail about the transfer programs, specifically in British Columbia. So we also offer transfer programs to UT students, both in the forms of uh, university transfer programs and also in form of associate degrees. Uh, the difference is that associate degree provide you uh, flexibility that you can complete the first two years of a bachelor's uh, degree in Canada and then start working in Canada, maybe gain a PR, and even after doing a PR, you know, getting a PR, if you want to complete your bachelor's degree, then you have the chance to come back to the to any university in British Columbia and complete your remaining degree depending on your grades. So this is what associate degree and as a university transfer program generally means. Um, we have associate degrees in uh, science and chemistry, computer science, arts, whichever subjects you want to apply for. We also offer diplomas in business. Uh, we also offer some PG diplomas, which are generally into four categories. One is accountancy, second is tourism and hotel management, third is IT, and fourth is account, uh, I'm sorry, HRM. It's a post diploma in HRM. So uh, the IELTS requirement for this college is six bands overall, not as in 5.5 for all the uh, programs. And we also offer some medical related programs like a practical nurse diploma, dental hygiene diploma but the requirements for them are a little higher because they're more competitive and we prefer to have local Canadians over there for these programs. Uh, then we look at international seats. So the tuition fee for one year at this college is around $12,000 per year. Uh, so two years qualification will cost you around $25,000. And uh, after two years of course, whether it is associate degree or is it a diploma, you will be eligible to apply for a post uh, study work permit of up to three years. Uh, it is located in the city of Prince George, uh, which is in the center of British Columbia. So in terms of distance from Vancouver, it takes around one hour flight to reach uh, Prince George from Vancouver. By road, it takes around eight to nine hours to reach uh, Prince George from Vancouver. So Prince, and jo uh, Prince George is a you know relatively smaller city compared to Vancouver. It is having a population of around 90,000 people, but it's a very beautiful location. Uh, Jasper National, uh, National Park is very near close by. Rocky Mountains around three to four hours drive from there. So it's a beautiful location uh, with, uh, you know, very affordable cost of living. And even the college is one of the most affordable options that you will see in Canada. The second institute that I'm representing over here is uh, McKeven University. Now this is a public university, which is based in the city of Edmonton. Now Edmonton is one of the biggest cities, just like Toronto and Vancouver. 
and Edmonton is also the capital city of Alberta province. So in Alberta province, students have the benefit that uh, they get free healthcare, and uh, the taxes are you know very nominal compared to other provinces of Canada, and even the PR process is easier compared to say Ontario and British Columbia over there. Uh, so Cal uh, the another bigger city, Calgary is also very close by to Edmonton. It takes around three to four hours drive to reach Calgary from Edmonton. So Edmonton and Calgary are both large cities of Canada with a population of more than one million each, and they have you know very strong communities of you know Indian descendants or Asian people over there, along with local Canadians. And you can find all kind of jobs in Edmonton, whether it is IT, whether it is hospitality, whether it is you know any other industry. So uh, we have five faculties at this university. Uh, starting from arts and science, then we have faculty of business. We also have faculty of uh, health and community studies. Then we have a faculty of arts and communication studies, and we also have faculty of nursing. We only offer undergraduate degrees and diplomas in these uh, programs. We do not have too many PG options at this university. Uh, the admission uh, requirements start from 65% onwards, and they can be up to 90% for few programs like nursing. IELTS requirement for this university is around 6.5, overall not less than 5.5. Both these institutes are also taking dual lingo nowadays. Uh, for fall intake, we are already full for McEwen University and CNC. Uh, we are taking applications for January intake for McEwen. For CNC, we will be starting for January intake in the month of July. So if you have any specific questions for any of these institutes, I'm here to answer you and I'm leaving down my email ID for your reference as well. So, uh, that's all from my side. Okay, uh, I think great. That's really good. Uh, I think we've covered up everyone. Everyone spoken or? Hi, good evening, everybody. And uh, I'm sorry for the little low light here because there's no power over here. And uh, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes. Okay, so uh, my name is Samanyu and uh, I'll be talking a little about uh, three institute today. Uh, first is NIC. Uh, North Island College, then Trent River University, then Acadia University. So first of all, I will start with North Island College. Now, North Island College is a public college which was established in 1975. It's situated in Vancouver Island and boasts of four campuses over there. The main campus is in Como Valley and it's just a 35 minute flight from Vancouver. Now, it's a beautiful location, very safe and stable, and it boasts one of the lowest unemployment rates in all of Canada. It also holds a very mild climate, uh, which is more acceptable to the Asian students. And uh, there's also a healthy Indian population over there. So, and there's no problem with getting a part-time jobs and stuff like that. Now we offer associate degrees in arts and science, university transfers to some of the best universities in British Columbia, like SFU, University of Victoria, Vancouver Island University. We also offer uh, engineering guarantee transfer to University of Victoria for uh, disciplines such as civil engineering, computer, soft engineering, biomedical, and mechanical. We offer also business programs, like business admin certificate and diplomas. We, offer, we also offer a bachelor's degree in DBA, where you can major in accounting, <clears throat> marketing, or general management. We also offer postgraduate certificates in business administration, a PG diploma in global business management. And another flagship program that we have is a PG diploma in pre-professional accounting which basically boasts of all the prerequisites uh, that you require. So you can, if you are interested, you can later give your CPA exam. And you can also transfer into the MBA program of Vancouver Island University. We also have programs in tourism and hospitality, UD certificates, UD diplomas, and PG certificates and diplomas as well, like global tourism and hospitality. We also have programs in culinary arts and fine arts, as well as interactive media. We also have programs in human services, social service diploma, and human services diploma. We also have an early childhood care diploma and great programs as well. Now our IELTS requirements for undergraduate programs is an overall uh, score of six, but not less than 5.5. And for our postgraduate programs, the requirements is 6.5, no less than 5.5. And due to the COVID situation, we are also accepting Duolingo score, which is uh, the requirement is uh, a score of 105. Now we also have co-ops and internships with our majority of our programs. And we are also offering scholarships on the basis of IELTS. So basically if you're scoring an undergraduate score of seven, so around $500 of scholarship is available. And is the postgraduate, if you're scoring a overall seven, then 
uh, basically a scholarship of around one thousand dollars if it's available. Now, for students who do not have maths for the business program, a maths assessment is available, and our application fees is a hundred dollars, and our nominal fee for undergraduate programs is around thirteen thousand five hundred dollars per year, and for our PG programs is around seventeen thousand dollars per year. So that's the information on North Island College. Now uh, I'll be shifting uh, for information regarding Thompson River University. Now, Thompson River University was established in 1970. It's also a public university. Yes. It's located in, hello, yeah, sorry. It's located in Kamloops in British Columbia, and it's also one of the sunniest cities in all of British Columbia. It's a very vibrant city with a very strong and diverse economy, and it's just four hours drive to Vancouver. It boasts of more than 14,000 students with more than 3,000 international students. Representing over 90 plus countries, it also has a very healthy Asian population, and they offer more than 140 programs. Now, TRU is basically a one-stop shop. We, are, we offer associate degrees, we offer university transfers, we offer undergraduate diplomas, certificates, uh, bachelor degrees, post-bac programs uh, for in uh, fields such as adventure, culinary arts, tourism, arts, science, social work, human services. Health science, nursing. We also have an engineering transfer where you can complete first or second year in TRU, and then you can transfer into University of Victoria or University of British Columbia. Same as in our forestry programs, you can trans, you can take first or second year in TRU, and you can you can transfer into the University of British Columbia. Now we also have masters program. We also have a MBA program, and uh, where you basically if you've done a three-year degree, you can go for our MBA. Our IELTS requirement uh, is 6.5, no less than six, and for our uh, MBA program, the IELTS requirement is seven, no less than 6.5. Now, all our undergraduate programs and other programs, the requirement is you must have scored above 60%, and for our basically masters, is 70% plus. Now, we do require a pre-assessment before application, which is a mandatory thing. Now, our fee requirement is around $17,600 per year. Like for example, our MBA program is around forty thousand for the total duration of the course. Our application fee is around hundred dollars. Now we also offer co-ops and practicums with our programs. So this is regarding uh, Thompson River University, and uh, I'm sorry I'm taking a little bit of more time, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm sorry. I think we're yeah. running a little short of time, so we can start. Can we move on to the Q and A question and answers because I see a lot of questions coming yeah. up. And we are running short of time, so I'm sorry about that. But I think we everyone did get a complete gist about uh, what uh, studying Canada is all about, and with the fantastic core programs and varied uh, courses in various disciplines is all there. And if we have any specific questions, we can definitely ask the representatives later at the end of the session. Um, having said that, I think we can start with some Q and A. So, Aparna, you want to start with uh, the first question that you have? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. And we have received a set of questions from our students who are currently attending this webinar. So, we'll take up these questions one by one. Yeah. The first question that I have from a student is: Will a certificate program or one-year postgraduate diploma give me an opportunity to work in Canada and then later apply for a PR opportunity? Thank you. I would like to answer this question. A one-year program is not a recommended program if it is not a master's degree, because if it is a certificate program, it is not a recommended thing because you will get one year of study gives you one year of work permit, and one year of work permit is not long enough for you to uh, do that work work and then go to. Uh, 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 and apply for your permanent residency. If you are in the Atlantic provinces, which uh, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, uh, those provinces, uh, New Brunswick, you are able to do one year, and then may maybe you may be able to squeeze it, but not a good process. So you should be looking for a two-year program. Then you will get a three-year work permit. That gives you time to convert your status from non-Canadian to a Canadian PR. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I have an, uh, another similar question here. In case I do a one-year certificate program and then work for another one year, then can I apply for a master's program and then work for two years? 
okay, so that's the trajectory will be. You will study for one year, take, you can only get work permit for one time. So you will have used your, your work permit. And then you will go to two year study as an international student and then come out and hope to heck that your work permit has converted into a PR while you are studying. And it does happen. So one year of study, uh, work for one year, apply for PR, start as an international student in the master's program at a very high fee, and then uh, no work permit. If you don't get it, you're out. Oh, that's that's scary. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't know so, about that, Karuna, that if you could, right, you could so only apply that for that work permit done. just once. While you're just in one time. You, your thing is only for one time. So you have used your privilege. Most students will take that chance because the chance of getting your PR uh, while you are studying is there, but you have to work for one year uh, and then go back as an international student still. And then there's no permit, work permit after that because you've already used that privilege. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's very important. That's something that we can look down here. <laughs> okay, there yeah. is a question, there's a question for me for Waterloo. Can I please answer that? The student has said, I'm in, I've received an offer from, uh, uh, financial analysis and risk management. Is it possible for me to transfer to actuarial sciences? Absolutely, you can transfer. You can write an email to me. I will send it to you, I'll give it to Niharika. The first year of financial analysis and risk management is definitely heavy math oriented program, which can, and you will apply for that transfer to uh, actuarial science. So if you are taking pure maths, it's a trajectory right to, to actuarial sciences. There is not a direct entry to actuarial science. The first year is a very big math program. And then from there, you will go into that. But financial analysis and risk management, if you want to do actuarial sciences, absolutely po possible. Just write to me and I will explain that to you. And my email is very simple, kosman at uwaterloo.ca and I'm writing it down for you. Okay, next, please. Uh, there's another question where a student says, Ria Sharma, she says that she's got above 90% and a very, very high IELTS score. How much scholarship do you think she will be eligible to get from, say, Waterloo? Okay, Waterloo is not a scholarship university. If you're looking for scholarship university, I certainly will not be able to give you any more than 90% gets you maybe, maybe if you're lucky between $1,000 to $2,000. But what I'm going to give you is ability to have a working scholarship. You will study, study, work, study, study, work. And the work I'm talking about is a co-op work. Then work, study, work, study, work, study, work, study. During this period of time, depending on the program, you can make between fifty dollars to $100,000 yourself. That is your working scholarship. So reducing the cost of education, by one third approximately, 25% to one third of the cost can be covered. You're allowed to work 20 hours a week anyway. So that also helps you out. Plus you have scholarship, reoccurring scholarship where you apply for it. So that's not only true for Waterloo. If you're applying for other universities, there are some universities, if you're looking for a cost effective university, we didn't cover much about Memorial. Um, you can have a university degree for less than 40,000, uh, uh, sorry, 40,000 uh, lakhs of rupees, so $80,000. Everything included, never have to work. So you go there, you study, you come out, and fantastic university. If you're looking for cost effective universities, if you're looking for reputationally cooperative education, you are wanting to go to Ontario, uh, Wilfrid Laurier is going to be a little less pricey, and Trent will be a little less pricey. Waterloo is a very expensive university, but it gives you uh, experience that are a little bit buried and a little bit uh, demanded by parents that uh, your career ready are their jobs and very high um, job rate and very small failure rate. That's one of the reasons, but the prices are going up by 50% next year. So that's a lot of, lot of increase in cost. So if you're cost um, sensitive, we have universities which are equally reputation. Let's talk about Saskatchewan. It is giving you a degree of $90,000. It's an amazing school of learning. So let us know which program and we'll provide you a very good choice. Thank you. Uh, I have another question. Uh, you want to move on, uh, uh, Aparna? Then I'll just look at the question. Yes, ma'am, because uh, 
you know, we just discussed a few pointers here, and related to that, I have a set of questions along with me. Uh, let's just go one by one. First one that I have, another one here is: For how many years can I work after completing my master's program? If it's a two-year program, three years. Okay. Moving on so to the next question. The law, yes. the law is one year of study, one year of work permit. Two years of study, three, two to three years of work permit. Over two years of study, three years of work permit. Nothing more than that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So I have, a, I have a, I'm sorry, I have a question from Ashish Kumar. And he says that I'm a bachelor's, uh, I'm a BE in ECE, that is electrical computer engineering, 2013, passed with a 69.5% average. And I have seven years of IT experience. Do I qualify to move on for a master's degree or a postgraduate diploma in computer science? Um, be very honest with you, uh, nothing in University of Waterloo would work for that profile. Uh, I would have liked to have taken him for a um, program in a university for embed, but he's a few percentages lower for us. The work works, but uh, there are some postgraduate studies and uh, uh, I think I will let uh, you talk, uh, Mrs. Singh, about the two-year PDIT program, which, yes, by the way, is sold out. Sold out. Yes. So uh, we offer two years post-diploma in information technology at CNC College. Uh, we'll be starting the application for January intake, uh, starting from 1st July onwards. The requirements generally are having more than 60% marks. Uh, you should have an IELTS score of six overall, not less than 5.5 bands. And the fees for two years will be around $25,000. Uh, I have a question. We, so, sorry, we do have a Ashim. Will be, uh, Ashim, where are you? Will you take a 69.5 for a master's program? No, ma'am. Okay, no. Okay. Nothing sorry. less than 70. Okay, thank you. I have a question. So what is the average kind of marks that you're looking at uh, for a student to apply for a master's program? I mean, um, at your university. So minimum so should be 70% above. 70% yeah. 70 yeah. above. Yeah. Above. For this one. I would like you to know that a uh, student is competing with five levels of students. A student is competing with that university's undergraduate students moving into master's program that provinces, that country, the whole world, and that and in the whole world comes India. So you have to understand, you have to be competitive. And the biggest issue is the students are not competitive. They're not having good grades. They need to have really high grades. I have a student here who's asking for a question. I have 82% aggregate, and that is the student. We're looking at actually last two years of education. We're not looking at a four-year degree. We're looking at four years. It has to be a four-year degree, first of all, has to have, the, except for uh, Thompson Rivers and a couple of other universities that take a three-year degree, a four-year degree within last two years being 80% approximately and a very good IELTS score. It isn't that people don't want you to come in. It's that we have very limited seats. And uh, I heard Kashish speak a little bit about it. It's just that I, how many applications do you have, Kashish, for your 40 seat? 500 some applications, right? For you, uh, your MBA program. You Approximately, have... ma'am, yes, for every intake that we have. Yeah, 500 for 30 seats or 40 seats. So competition is very keen. So either you have done something like you've written an algorithm and you've gone and published it and you've got something going. If you are sitting at just the base mark, that doesn't work out. The student with seven year work experience will have a chance if they should apply of being looked at because if the experience is in the related field, it does play give you a few extra points. So my suggestion always is apply for the masters and then also apply for a diploma because if you don't get into masters, you can get into a diploma program. Never ever not apply because you never know it is seats and profiles have to be matched to work, to get a master's degree. And we're talking about course-based masters. If you're doing research-based, you've got to find a professor. You've got to pro find a professor. Um, yeah, so I have another question of another student. Her name is Sushmita Vashisht. 
and she says that I'm a computer science graduate, 2012. Passed mm -hmm. out with a 72% with a five years of work experience. And now I'm looking for a program in masters in digital marketing. Is it possible to get admission? Now coming to this question, I have, I have a question for the team. And that is, does GRE play a very important role in evaluating a student's application? Or is it the percentages which has a higher uh, uh, yastic to look into? I'll give you a little bit of an overview, then I'd like Kashish to take over and uh, Sita to take over. GRE is, is a requirement specific to each discipline or GMAT. GMAT is more mathematical, GRE is, is more logical and theoretical in language. Now, when you're writing, I wrote a GRE because I was in education when a million years ago, um, and literally a million years ago. Uh, when you look at this uh, GRE requirement, it is not generally not a requirement for course-based programs, but you have to check every one of them. But I'd like you to create a house in your mind the key that opens the door to look at the other qualification is the marks. If you don't have the marks, I don't really care about the GRE. That doesn't play out at all. For, you, for GRE to play out in your favor, you first have to have the grades. So now I have two students. GRE was not required. One student has 82% and GRE, and one student has 75% no GRE. So of course, I'm going to take the 82% with GRE. But if you were a student with... 75% uh, and had a GRE and you were competing with an 85%, you will not get it. You will not get it. It's pure competition, pure algorithm, right in your mind. What am I giving in my resume to the, uh, for, for admissions to look at? I have a question here, but by the way, I just want to answer, don't want to run out of time. Uh, I'm an undergraduate student with Bachelor of Science degree, 28 credits, and would like to go for transfer. Every single one of my colleagues will help, but I like Kashish to just talk about the master's program because I need him to talk about the MBA and MQIM and what he requires because you should hear that out as well. Go ahead, Mona. So for University of New Brunswick, there are two masters that we, uh, these are both professional program. One is an MBA. This is a 20 month MBA program. Uh, we can do a general MBA or you can choose a specialization in your second year as well. Ideal requirements are that the student needs to have at least 70% uh, approximately in their bachelor's. So it can be 69% or it can be 71 as well. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule of set 70%. But uh, like I said, like ma'am said earlier, the program is competitive at the end of the day. So the higher the grades, the better chances you have of acceptance. So 70%, you need a GMAT score of minimum 550 and an IELTS score of 7 overall. These are three standard requirements that they have for the MBA program. Now, some you can also apply for a GMAT waiver. If, you, if there's a candidate who has, let's say, 80% in their bachelor's from a NAC A accredited university like Delhi University, for example, as they are eligible to apply or request for a GMAT waiver and based on their application and the documents that they have provided to the university, the admission officers consider them for a GMAT waiver. Right. Uh, again, it depends from candidate to candidate. So if you are requesting for a GMAT waiver, please make sure that you meet the requirements or you have something extra in your CV to prove that you all that you basically need to show that you have already proven your quantitative skill sets. And hence, you don't need to give the GMAT again. Uh, the second program we have is called MQIM, Masters in Quantitative Investment Management. It's a 12-month uh, master's. This is all about uh, portfolio management, uh, business analytics, uh, risk management, insurance and banking. Um, if, you, if you have any computer science graduates uh, in the cohort here today, this would be an excellent program for you guys to look into uh, because there's a lot of coding element involved in the MQIM program. This is all about uh, designing financial derivatives using languages like Python and MATLAB to come up with uh, financial decisions for big companies or, and these are government companies as well. We are talking about like BC investment funds, uh, New Brunswick student uh, funding, etc. Right. So the 12 month program also consists of a capstone project. So it is an accredited course and you also get, I think, 24 credits for the capstone project itself. That means you'll be working with a potential employer. Last year, the students were made to, um, I think they had to handle an $8 million funding uh, pool for a certain company in New Brunswick itself in Fredericton. 
<clears throat> the GMAT requirement for the MQIM program is about 600. The, since the program is fairly more uh, competitive and the class size also decreases further. For the MBA, we generally have a class size of 40 to 50 uh, in the intake. And uh, we only have one intake in the year, which is the fall intake. Only as an exception due to COVID-19, we are having a winter intake into 2021 as well. So for 2021, we will have a January as well as a fall intake for both our MBA and the MQIM program. And that is only a, that is just an exception for this year, considering the circumstances. Uh, for the MQIM, like I said, the IELTS, uh, the GMAT is 600 and the IELTS remains seven as well for both programs. We're going to move on from there. I like to, um, anybody wants to answer about the transfer program, it will depend on the grades you have. And uh, Thompson Rivers University, by the way, does have an MBA for uh, HRM specialization person looking for that. Uh, that student can also look at an embed program as well. 85% is not a high enough marks, Viraj, uh, for scholarships in 12th grade. A very limited amount of scholarship will come from that, even if you've done extracurricular activities. Uh, going back to undergraduate studies, uh, once again, Sita, do you want to just talk about a transfer program and just touch on your master's also, please? Yeah. So uh, for the transfer program, you will first have to send your transcripts. We will look at it and see how much of credit we can give you for what you have already studied. There is no guarantee that you will get full credit. So uh, once you send those, uh, even before, like first you apply, then you send us your transcripts and then we'll tell you how much credit you will get. And this is not just for Trent University, but any of the other universities who are there on the panel today, we all function in the same way that we need to know what you have studied and how much credit we can give you. It will never be a full credit, that much is pretty sure. And regarding the masters, we do have both research-based as well as uh, course-based masters at Trent Universities. I will not talk about the research-based masters because that is nothing that you know any of us can decide. It's more about uh, the professor who's going to decide your eligibility. But for the course-based masters, we look at a minimum four-year degree we do not accept any three-year degrees, not even a three-year degree with one-year postgraduate diploma. That's also not accepted. It has to be a four-year academic undergrad degree. Uh, and then we look at an overall GPA of 75% or higher. Your GPA is calculated for your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth semester. Sometimes if you have lesser marks in your first four semesters, that can be adjusted based on what you have got in your final four semesters. Uh, along with that, we also look at an IELTS score of 6.5 band, no band less than 6. After you apply, you will need three reference letters and you need to write an SOP about why you want to study mm -hmm. the program that you have applied for and also about why you chose Trent. Uh, the popular programs are Masters in Management. We have Masters in Big Data Analytics, which is very, very popular in India, we close in February, like in just three to four months, the program gets oh, closed. So if you're interested to apply, we cannot take you for fall 2020. You have to apply for fall 2021, and that will open in October. We also have a very good program called Financial Analytics, so you can apply for that as well. And if you check on our website, there are other programs like Masters in Psychology and like Masters in Environmental Sciences and things like that. So that's a little bit about our course based masters. We have a few masters thing. I want to just put this to rest, please. I'm going to go back to my, uh, my undergraduate students. Uh, masters is a very personal journey for you. This is actually, though a forum is good, but this isn't a place. You have to have one-to-one -one counseling for masters. Number one, you have been asking questions. I've got 82%. Do I need a GRE? Marks don't replace GRE and GMAT. Those are specific check mark requirements. Done, had, et cetera, et cetera. And master's uh, undergraduate, I don't require IELTS score for admission or CBSC for Cambridge system, et cetera. But for master's, we all require it. Even a Canadian has to write some kind of English proficiency thing. So those kind of questions can be minimized. You will be writing IELTS score. And if the specific master's, for example, that uh, Kashish was speaking about requires a GMAT or GRE, we are going to put it in that you're asking for an exception and I will tell you it will be denied because that's one measure that we check you uh, through that you are capable of coping with the education that is going to be taught. Secondly, uh, if you have a, 
a little bit of a low percentage, apply for a two year, very, very well respected programs for postgraduate studies. So undergraduate, you can go to postgraduate diploma, get your PR, and then the, all the, the masters are open for you. So this cutting corners does not work. It does not work. And this really does take away from uh, the agencies. Then they try and put you in wrong programs because you are demanding. Look at it and please send us a profile. We will evaluate and we'll tell you what is open. Person with 82% uh, who has uh, wanting to do a master's in um, but has to have a four-year degree, can talk to Archim uh, and she can assist you with uh, computer science related. A three-year psychology degree does not get you into any psychology master's program. It is not actually a good thing for you to do anyway. You should do a two-year uh, diploma, either in HRM or something, and CNC will give you such a reasonable price and not a single person without employment. Um, what is the acceptance rate for Trent University for undergraduate? If you have 75%, because they don't do quota system, uh, first come, first serve, if their seats open, the chances are very good uh, chance you'll get in. But if you're looking for a uh, very high uh, thing where marks are really important, for example, CS and software, they will require higher grades than 75%. Please remember that uh, it will it will be evaluated on first come first serve basis and on the grades. You have few days to apply. Always apply. Don't be hesitant to apply because you don't know what pathway they will choose for you. Don't apply for Waterloo. I'm going to be very honest. If you don't have 95% for CS, don't even think of it for next year. Don't even think of applying. This year, not even 96% got in because they're limited seats. But they gave you an alternate path. And kids are so silly, they question that alternate path. The university wants you to meet your dreams. Please remember that. Uh, does any university provide political science? Please mention the requirement in a college. We all, every single institution here provides political science. So it depends on where you would like to study. Please talk. All of you have the best counsel. Niharika's group is phenomenal academics. They will sit down and they will give you every choice that you have. Price point advantage, we have no university here that is not public or that is non, uh, not non-profit. There's no profit motive thing here. We will get you the right, right program at the, you just have to say my budget is this. And if you say to me, my uncle's brother, sister's uh, boyfriend lives there, no issue for, uh, uh, in terms of me to say, I don't care. I really don't care. I need to give you a program. So don't give me that kind of garbage. I don't want to hear about it because relatives, friends don't make the program. Everyone, please raise a hand and say, have I said the right thing? What we need to look is chase the program, chase the program because four years, my God, eight semesters, you can go anywhere in Canada. We're not holding you in uh, shackles and chains and say, stay here. We are saying study and get out. You, if you don't have money, why would you struggle? Why wouldn't you go to uh, Memorial? Why wouldn't you go to Acadia? Why wouldn't you go to UNB? Uh, St. FX, they're giving you such powerful degrees that you can finish at Dalhousie University in the top 10 universities, 15 universities of Canada. If you want to do engineering, the flagship program of Saskatchewan, go there. They have CS, they have seats, and they don't, they have less seats this year than they had last year but apply and they are giving the day they told us that they will take your predicted scores if you don't have real scores. So I'm gonna just touch on COVID right now. COVID has created a lot of anxiety amongst uh, both the educators and the being educated. We don't know what to say to you at this moment. Will India be closed in August? Will you be able to fly out or not? But having said that, I would like you to remember, apply as soon as you can so we can start to get the study permit documentation ready so that you can study at home. We are doing blended programs. We are providing you ability to do uh, your first semester at home, not to move out of there because your health is our first priority. We don't want to bring you into study 
and then put you in danger. We don't want to put ourselves in danger. Yesterday I had a wonderful uh, presentation for College of New Caledonia and they are saying that if you do come in September and if it does open, there's 14 day mandatory uh, quarantine because you would have gone through various places. So let's just talk about this. All of you have beautiful things at acceptance rate for a trend. If you meet, meet the marks, you will get in. How can we help best help you? And yes, reputation, there is not a bad university. Wilford Laurier uh, BBA program, 95% is where the students are getting the program because they're in the top five because there's a lot of demand for it. They're giving you a lot of experience in it. Co-op university, uh, Waterloo is number one, but Saskatchewan, Manitoba, uh, Wilford Laurier, the uh, UNP, uh, Acadia, they all, uh, St. FX, we all have cooperative education. Uh, uh, Waterloo has mandatory and 100% of the students will be places by criteria, by selection. So till we know your program, till we know your profile, we cannot take you, but everyone here, all of the questions here, I can get you a program. I can, every single one of you. I've been reading it. Uh, is, uh, they're saying, is IELTS better or TOEFL better? IELTS is better if you can write an IELTS, not the online one, because that is what the STS program requires. Sita, give us the STS requirements, please. Visa, um, visa distinction. Yeah, I think uh, Niharka is very, very well versed with uh, the SDS and non-SDS process. But if you write the IELTS, that is very well accepted by the Canadian High Commission. Uh, SDS or non-SDS, they do give... Uh, SDS, IELTS is mandatory. But if you're going for even the regular route, you still need to have some English requirement exam. They prefer IELTS. They don't say it obviously, but in, in my experience and in my opinion, I think IELTS stands a better chance. But if written a TOEFL, it won't be a deterrent. So if you have not yet written the exam, please write IELTS. That should be yeah. your first choice. The IELTS is not open, so I can write the home IELTS. Yes. Uh, it is missing one thing. It is missing the speaking component. And that's uh, very much required. But Duolingo is being offered uh, to everyone, but it's and it's good till December, but not good for SDS visa. It is okay for non-SDS visa, so that you you know that they're still making a decision on that. Uh, English proficiency is the reason for our success in Canada. We need that so that you can succeed in the classroom. It is not a punitive measure. We are not punishing anyone. We are doing this. So when you come into classroom, you can succeed. So uh, Sita had said something about transfer of credits. Remember the regulation is that you must do the last two years of study in the university that's offering uh, you the degree. It, there are exceptions to every rule. And if you are a student who has a first class three year degree, I have a, a, a student in Waterloo, only had to do uh, three semesters, so which was fantastic. We will try and give you as many credits as possible, and we are all looking for transfer students. Every single university is looking, except for faculties like engineering. Transfer is very complex. Waterloo doesn't take it. And because we are a cohort program, you will study as a group and come out as a group. Uh, but engineering is a very complex because we have rules, we have standards, we must have safety regulations, which don't exist in all countries. So we will look at your uh, degree and then we will determine how much credits you can be given in uh, Saskatchewan or Manitoba, et cetera. You can apply generally about a year to a year and a half if you've done two to three years of study. It's not direct, but for political science, social work, human rights, all of those, pretty close to uh, one and three quarters of a year you can get out of the two years. I myself uh, was a transfer student. Uh, I had a degree from uh, Delhi University Another good degree, uh, not a, what paper it was written on, and was given two full years by, by University of Alberta. So yes, you will be able to get that and you will be able to uh, continue your study to finish. And the visas is not an issue because you're continuing your education. So that's a good thing. Um, I have Akita, a question. I'm sorry, sorry. I have a question here. Um, where WES is required, you know, it, a lot of universities require WES evaluation. 
and some of the evaluation from Delhi University who have completed three years of undergraduate with a higher percentage are given equivalency to the four years undergraduate. Yeah. If, so, you the, if you have the best uh, uh, qualifications and you want to set in, if you were uh, in, in the Prasta College at Delhi University and you did a, a degree and you got 90%, you sent it to BES and you, they said it was four years, that would be one document added to your, but do not count on it because they will tell you, uh, no, uh, that's, you still don't have 16 years of qualified education. But WES is not a requirement. If you have it, that's an added bonus to you. You should get it done. When in doubt, get it done. High yeah. school students don't have to do WES. I want to say it in large voice. No West required for CBSE, All India Board or anything. And kids are sending it to West. They're thinking you have to get the West to qualify. High school has a bilateral agreement universally. We respect everybody's high school program and evaluate. If you're missing a course, we will give you a method to, to cope up with this. So please don't spend money on West and get it done. It is the undergraduate students uh, who are finished undergrad studies who want to go to master's. West is an added document that uh, gives the university an, uh, a platform to say, okay, well, Wes is thinking that this degree is worth, but they, they may still say, no, not enough courses in the thing. So uh, my uh, thing is, Wes helped me for them to say that the qualifications were good. I'm 1970. So uh, problem is that things have changed. Now qualifications have changed. So things are very different and please make sure those kind of documents add. I want to say something. I'm dealing with two students right now. Sita will so frustrated. Sita, how many times do we say, do not add your IELTS for admission? Do not add. They're during not the asking. Day. Please don't add it. But they. If you are asking, I'm not. I'm talking about University Wilfrid Laurier University. I'm asking, talking about Trent University. I'm talking about Waterloo. I didn't ask you for it, and now you've given it, and now you are sitting at a six in writing, and I need six point five. Guess what? You have to do iBase, and the seven thousand dollars charge right to your your bill. And I asked yesterday, what if the child writes it again and gets better? No, madam, got to go to iBase. So, because we were lenient last year, we're not lenient anymore. And like West will not work for Trent. Huh? Four years no. degree is four years degree. We don't care what West says. I know, but some of the universities yeah. do say that if you have a West. I have another question. What about masters in architecture? Now, I, I, have, a, I have a student here. No? They have to apply themselves. They must be one phenomenal artist. Marks is one thing, and need the portfolio is the maker and breaker of the deal. Yeah. Ma'am, she, she's talking about a master's. It's a licensed yeah, right. program, so no, you... No, 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 Even in master's, the first yeah. thing they want to open is the portfolio. Yes, of course. Yeah, which yeah. school se padh ke aaye? Which school did she study? I, I, want to, I want to just unlock here, uh, Nitin Sugani. Uh, Nitin Sugani, you want to talk about this, please? Um, yeah, hi. This is me, Navisha, his daughter. Yeah, hi, yeah. Navisha. Uh, I have uh, com I am about to complete my bachelor in architecture. From where? From from Jaipur, Ayojan School of Architecture. Is it is it a public institution? Is it NAC One University? It's it's affiliated with Rajasthan University. Affiliation. See, there are only twenty or thirty universities that will come into Waterloo. Okay, so we are we have a master's of architecture. You have master's of architecture in McGill. You have market, master's of architecture in Carlton. Uh, you have it in Toronto. You have it in Ryerson. You have it in uh, Manitoba. But very small number of seats. What are your grades, my dear? Uh, I'm still giving the final exam right now. So and I'll be getting GPA. What's your accumulated GPA? Uh, it's somewhere around uh, 70 percent. Uh, it won't even be counted for me uh, because it's not high enough, but the competition will come down to grades and the university and the portfolio and an interview, a huge interview for master's level in architecture. Okay. Because 
we're looking for an artistic person who understands uh, Gaudi in uh, Spain. I want to go and see that art. What kind of architecture is she doing? Is she interested in architecture? As many fields, you can do landscaping. Is a that's an architecture program as well. You can do structural engineering. Is an architecture program. So if uh, I don't know what your area of interest in architecture is, but if it is uh, very specific. Uh, write specially to me. I will send you, uh, or actually I'll write it in the uh, thing here for you, in uh, if for everyone. The, I've written my email. If you're looking at grad admissions, please write to grad admissions at uwaterloo.ca. My recommendation to you, Nitin, please listen to me very carefully. I would do an MBA after an architect degree if you want to make money. That's my pure and simple advice to you. Why, Why? do you say that, Corona? Because now she's got the artistic talents in her hand. She now needs to go get contracts to build other people's houses. She doesn't have the talent to do entrepreneurship and marketing. So she needs to have that as under her belt. Then do oh. Masters of Architecture making her very, very strong. Would you not agree, uh, Kashish, that an MBA Absolutely. would so give Absolutely, her Absolutely, because you, know, you need the business acumen at the end of the day to survive in any industry. And if you are an architect and you manage to do an MBA, you'll be a whole lot better in understanding the budgeting uh, side of things, uh, the money aspects, okay. dealing with bigger projects, of course, project management itself is a key element of the MBA program. So an MBA would enhance your skill set within your own industry. But you and will not get the license to, to practice architecture if you don't do a master's in architecture. Absolutely. So she should get an MBA, get a job. Uh, now, uh, Niharika, please uh, give me this. You are an Indian person. I'm a Canadian architect. I will come into your complex, uncivilized surveying. I don't know how they decide ki ghar yaan banega, yaan maa banega. Kar lete na ye loo. You become an architecture for this particular area. Not possible. See, they will have to understand the whole system. So same thing in Canada. She's going to come in and learn about the thing. I'm not saying don't do your master's and don't get your license. You must get your license. But uh, do a year and a half or two year of MBA. Get into Canada. Then search from five or six top universities for the architectural program. And then you have something else to look at, think that now you have more than 16 years of education. You have very good grades in your MBA because that will be taken into consideration. You now become the almost a certainty that that is going to work out. Apply to both. I always say apply to all of the things. Which is good. Design studies, by the way, Nitin is also a very good thing design studies you can do masters in design uh you know architecture is many other things as well but i know exactly what your desire is but please 70 percent is a little bit low but i would still apply to waterloo just to see what they have to say thank you thank you waterloo is one of the top schools for architecture yeah in fact one of my students got into uh, master uh, bachelor's in architecture samia jain yeah, so make sure she sign, it takes it because very few seats she passed the interview. Yes. With yes. Yes. So, she got into Waterloo. Right. So I have an, uh, uh, Aparna, you have any other questions? Yeah. So moving on to the rest of the questions. Uh, can a student who has graduated from Vancouver go and work in Toronto? And if they are working in Toronto, can they apply for a PR from Vancouver or will it be from Toronto? Wherever they're working. They're currently, uh, they've graduated from Vancouver and they're currently working in Toronto. Can they do that? We're not, we're not a, a gulag or anything. We're not keeping children into one place. So uh, we have mobility, right? You can work anywhere, apply from anywhere. If you apply from Toronto, it will take three years. If you apply from Vancouver, it might take a little less. If you apply and go to northern communities, it will take less time because it will be P and P program provincially nominated program, this particular individual should write to me and I will give them a, a person who is doing that. None of us are going to be getting involved in that and neither should you. Yes. My advice is a legal matter. Please do not get involved in it. 
let us just send the student to us and we will uh, send them. Uh, can you please, uh, do you have a Mr. Billings uh, email? No, I don't. Okay. Sita, please send Mr. Billings email and they will uh, give the proper legal IRCC yes, advice. Yes, that will be, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. I will WhatsApp it to Aparna just now. Yeah, that will be yes. absolutely great. Yeah. yeah. Please, we, uh, we are not allowed to uh, uh, answer that. We just know generically that it takes longer because in uh, Ontario, it goes into the skilled labor category uh, type of a thing, whereas the PNP program is different. We have a uh, if she gets a job in uh, and wants to go and study, in, uh, sorry, stay in any of the Atlantic provinces, her dreams of becoming a PR would could be realized uh, easier and earlier. And uh, Kashish, uh, do you have the Mr. Actually, I will say, give her. Uh, I take my email, kosman at uwaterloo.ca. I will introduce you to somebody in uh, New Brunswick if you want to go there to do your PR application for you. There's cost to it, remember that. It's not yes, for free, you can do it for free, <laughs> but there's no cost to it. That's, that's great, that's great. Yeah. So anyone has any other questions? Um, Is there anything else? Uh, anyone can we just start? say to the, if there are lots of kids here who are registered for Trent and for Waterloo and for Wilford Laurier, please, if you have questions, where is Nalini? I don't see you here. Uh, please make sure that you give the questions to uh, Niharika, who is going to send to Aparna to give it to us. We will, at this moment, we are responding within minutes because your deadline for accepting the offer is right around the corner. Please remember that June 1 is a deadline to accept the offer and uh, Waterloo is not going to extend that particular deadline, but some other universities may, but don't take a chance. Don't take a chance. Uh, be prepared for online learning. You must have a study permit to, to take courses online. Please remember that. Talk to um, the uh, engineer people, they will help you. Start doing, preparing your files for all the things that you have. Uh, do your online application. That was a very good part of the presentation that CNC did, that get everything ready for online. If you cannot go to the VFS for biometrics, the um, CSC is waiting. The Canadian Immigration will wait for the document to come as soon as they open it. And I think they're planning to open on the 29th of this month, some of the VFS centers. So please make appointments to go get your biometrics done. Uh, do you want to add anything, Ajit, from yesterday's thing and this thing? No, as a VFS opening for the biomet uh, biometric centers, I don't, I don't know about that. But that's what, the date we got was that it was opening on the 29th uh, of May, uh, just going to take certain number of students. Five or six offices are open for medical things in New Delhi. If you take all of India, North Island College also discussed that. Uh, there are very few centers open for to get your medicals done and out of the way. So please research, 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 get these things done. Biometrics is not open anywhere, but as soon as they open, contact them and make your uh, fingerprints and all of the things that are needed. But it's a very, we are very sorry. We would have liked to have seen you face to face, but we cannot. But uh, what happened to uh, Ajit went off somewhere, I think. Uh, I would like to have Ajit to have answered the question, what they were saying yesterday about students who already have the visa. Uh, go ahead, Ajit. The, there was a very big discussion on it. it I, some, of, some of you may be sitting with visa. Um, yes, there is people from University of Manitoba that can speak to you. Somebody has asked. Ajit, uh, yesterday there was two yeah, so two or three very important points that were being made yesterday for study permits. And yes. they were saying, don't do paper-based. Uh, yeah, do... they were saying online applications are still going on. You can launch the online applications. How the student will, uh, you know, submit their biometric that uh, is still being watched and that still needs to be seen. But uh, the High Commission will keep the application open. They will give you more time to That's launch your applications. So generally so they give you 30 you days, that? but they're giving extension to 90 days uh, in current so did situation. You, did you get this feeling that they were saying, even if you don't have all the documentation up 
apply and then they will give you 90 days to complete. Sita, is that is that information make sense to you? That's what they yeah. said yesterday. Yeah, they've extended even beyond 90 days. They put it on their website. That, that time yes. is also be coming. And any communication will be coming through mail to the students and to the agents and to even the universities from high commission. So we are also waiting. And in the newspaper also. In India, yeah. they very frequently use the newspaper media. Nalini, there's a student wanting to talk to you from university, for University of Manitoba. What do you want to ask Akhil? Akhil Singh, Manitoba. I'm willing to answer your questions, Akhil, because we have a specialist here from the University of Manitoba if you want to talk to. Can you open a Mr. Akhil Singh? She's looking for master's program, I think. No, I think she's uh, saying uh, anybody from University of Manitoba master's or undergraduate. She has already so done MBA. MBA. Okay, well then that then she cannot help you. Um, anything else, uh, Niharika? I think we all sorted now. And best forensic science in can uh, program is in Trent. Forensic science is in Trent, exceptional program. And yes, forensics is needed in everything. It's not only blood pathology, it can be forensics and accounting, forensics and uh, many things, uh, criminology, social work, lots of forensics programs there. I know, okay. uh, we have one of our students coming this year to Trent for the, I think a similar program called Vibhav Channa. Ah. All right, great. Oh, great. Yeah. That's so, uh, so Nalini is now unmuted. Psychology uh, along with forensics, I think. Okay. Which one? Psychology along with forensics is what he's doing. Yep. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. I'm glad. glad. So if you want to ask something undergraduate from Nalini from Manitoba, she will be able to, she's the master of it. Baba mm. Chadna is here. Yeah, good. Congratulations. Congrats, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, accept, 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 accept. Do you have to pay? Yeah, your um, hi, I've answered, uh, I've answered Akhil Singh's question uh, in the chat. Okay, good. Thank because you. he was talking about master's programs, so I've told him what is to be done. Okay, okay I think uh, anyone has any questions? We are run by time. It's seven o'clock. And uh, I want to conclude the session and with my sincerest gratitude to one of my favorites in my life and Ms. Karuna. And the feeling is mutual. But <laughs> thank you so much for having us. We please everybody say gracious thanks to our host. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, thank you Nikarika. Saskatchewan is still open, by the way. Saskatchewan's engineering is still open. Please, please apply um, and we will fast track your admissions and give three documents is all I need. Grade 10 marks, grade uh, 12. And the entire uh, loop. Predicted yeah. scores. Yep. And the third document I need is uh, your application. Those are the only things. And then Sahil will take it forward. Is an assertive uh, passionate worker, uh, CNC is not open, and for UNB engineering is still open. And if you're looking for uh, a really diverse kind of education, you can also go to Acadia in terms of combination of co op and this, and then go to um, uh, Dalhousie. St. Apex is still open. So please remember, next four days, we are open to take applications for colleges, for uh, universities. Uh, Please make make your step and go forward and know you don't have to leave on September 1st. You can stay home with your parents and study online. That I can tell you that that will be available for you. So thank you to the students. Thank you, thank so you so much. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Everyone for your participation. Stay well, stay healthy. Yes, if every, anyone has any questions, please feel free to get in touch with the EdNet team. And if you have any other further questions, we will get in touch with the uh, Canadian representatives. Uh, have a nice, wonderful weekend. And thank you once again. And thank you so much, the Illum team. For thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, ma'am. Take care. Bye. Have a nice